and indirect ELISA measures antibodies. We also, though, can measure antigen using ELISA just by modifying the assay a little bit. And when we're measuring the antigen itself, we call that a sandwich ELISA or a direct ELISA because we're looking directly for the antigen. We're not looking for antibodies against the antigen, we're looking for the antigen itself, so it's a direct ELISA. And we call it a sandwich ELISA because we actually make a little antigen sandwich where the meat is the antigen and the bread is made of antibodies. So if we're going to detect an antigen, instead of binding an antigen into the ELISA well, we bind antibodies. So we call this our capture antibodies. We bind our capture antibodies and this is going to specify what the ELISA is going to measure because next we're going to add in our patient samples. And if there's that particular antigen that we're looking for, it's going to bind to these antibodies. So let's say that we're looking for some cytokine found in a patient's blood. Maybe they have rheumatoid arthritis and they're producing too much TNF. So we're going to do an ELISA that looks for TNF. And we're going to start by binding our capture antibodies to the plate. These capture antibodies are going to bind to TNF, so they're anti-TNF antibodies. So we bind those first. We're going to do the same process as we did before. We're going to allow time for those to bind. We're going to rinse them out. We're going to block the plate so there's no nonspecific binding of the patient sample. We're going to rinse that out, and then we're going to add the patient sample. So here we've added the patient sample, and as you can see, this patient does have some TNF found in her blood. The TNF has bound to the anti-TNF antibodies that are on the plate already. So we allow time for the binding to occur, and then we rinse out the patient's sample, and then just like we did before, we add a secondary antibody, which is a detection antibody. And in this case, the detection antibody is enzyme-linked, just as it was before, but instead of recognizing the FC portion of an antibody, it recognizes the antigen that we're measuring here. So we coated the plate with an antibody that recognizes TNF, the TNF bound to those antibodies, and so now the detection antibody is also going to recognize TNF. Okay? The only difference between the capture antibody and the detection antibody is that the detection antibody is linked to that enzyme. Okay? So we add in our detection antibodies, which are enzyme linked. We allow time for binding to occur, and then we rinse out the well, and then finally we add our substrate. And if those detection antibodies are still present because they bound to the antigen that was bound to the capture antibodies, then that enzyme is going to cleave the substrate and we're going to get color, just like we did in the indirect ELISA. Okay, now you can see why this is called a sandwich ELISA, because we end up making a little sandwich where the bread is actually antibodies. So to summarize, an indirect ELISA is going to measure antibodies. A sandwich ELISA is also known as a direct ELISA because it measures the antigen. And the difference between these is really just what is coded on the ELISA plate at the very beginning. If you coat the antigen, well, that means you're going to be assaying for the next thing that comes in, which is going to be the patient sample. And it's going to be antibodies found in the patient sample. But if you coat the ELISA plate with an antibody, well, then that antibody is going to bind to some antigen that's found in the patient sample. Okay, and then the detection antibody and the substrate steps are exactly the same.